All right, UFC 283 goes down Saturday morning and it is a light heavyweight title fight in the main event between Glover Teixeira and Jamal Hill. Now, I'm going to go through all the winners, okay? Whoever's going to win this weekend, listen to me. Put your money where your mouth is. Go to DraftKings. But... Here's my winners. Okay, so main event, light heavyweight title fight. Glover Teixeira, 43 years old. I mean, this man has been around forever. The career that he's had is just unbelievable, right? A former champion, choked out Jan Blachowicz, took him down with relative ease and got the rear naked choke. Then he lost to Yuri Prohaska last year. Singapore, fight of the year, unbelievable. Back and forth action, just unreal. Unbelievable fight. I mean, the chin that that man has, the skill, the takedowns, the jujitsu, he is a threat wherever it goes. However, he is also 43 years old. And that last war against Yuri Prohaska didn't take anything out of him. Wars do. Generally, you leave a piece of yourself inside the octagon. Now, I'm not saying that's happened. I'm saying there's a potential for that. On the flip side, we've got Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill is ridiculous. And this man hits so hard, right? Just look at that knockout over Johnny Walker. Did a Mexican wave going backwards. And maybe I'm putting too much stock into his knockout power. But the reality is this fight is high stakes, okay? High stakes on both sides, right? Jamal Hill has got that knockout power. We know that, okay? And if he connects... Flush, he can turn anybody's lights out. So that means for 25 minutes, Glover Teixeira has got to be perfect. If he makes a mistake, he's going to get knocked out. If Jamal Hill can catch him, it's going to be curtains. If Jamal Hill lands one of those signature shots, he's going to become the champion of the world. So Glover has to be perfect. That's a very, very difficult thing to do. But on the flip side, Jamal Hill also has to be perfect. He is nowhere near, with respect, the grappler that Glover Teixeira is. So he can't make a mistake. He can't get taken down. He can't allow himself to get pinned up against the fence, taken down with a single leg, switch to a double, a body lock, whatever it is. And if he is taken down, he's got to be so careful. He cannot engage in any kind of jiu-jitsu match because he's going to lose. He's got to get back to his feet. But as he's getting back to his feet, if he exposes his back like many people do, like a lot of people do when they're trying to get up, they throw caution to the wind, they get a little overexcited, they give up the back, the back gets taken and they get choked out so he's got to be perfect both men in this fight have to be absolutely perfect okay and who do i think wins well it's a tough pick and it could go down either way but i just think jamal's gonna connect now i'm not confident when i say that because glover Teixeira has a great chin he's got great takedowns he's got phenomenal boxing of his own the man is a serious threat wherever it goes. Call it intuition, call it a hunch, call it me being Mystic Man. Moving on to the co-main event, Davison Figueredo taking on Brandon Moreno for the fourth time. And I bet what you're all thinking, I hope this fight never gets made again. Well, guess what? The three fights have been incredible. The first one, a draw, sensational back and forth. Then Brandon Moreno goes out there, teaches him a lesson in the second fight, right? Gets a real naked choke in round three. And he was one step ahead the whole time. But... Figueredo gets revenge last time out in Anaheim one year ago from today. And that's significant. He won a decision over Moreno. Very close fight. Could have gone either way. A lot of Mexicans in the crowd were not happy, okay? Moreno had a lot of people supporting him there. I was there live. What a fight it was. Now, it was a year ago. In that year, Figueredo hasn't fought, okay? So I'm not saying he's going to be, he's not going to have ring rust or anything like that, but a year is a long time and he's 35 years old. So that means as a flyweight, he's getting towards the end of his career. The instincts, okay? The reflexes, the speed, they all start to diminish when you get to your mid to late thirties. Has the diminishment begun? We don't know, but it's a very, very good possibility. On the flip side, Brandon Moreno, late twenties, under 30, he has been active. He fought Kai Kara France in a sensational fight, okay? Back and forth fight. Only one time, but he's had another look. He's had another crack of the whip. He's been in the octagon. He stayed active. He's been through another camp, and he's been through loads of coaches. This fight, ultimately, though, for the fourth time, is going to come down to who has had the ability to extract more information about their opponent than the other one. And then who has got the ability to make that information work for them, right? Who can say what I did right and what I did wrong. What is my opponent good at? What is my opponent bad at? And then have the the humbleness, the humility to put, to realize those benefits, the, the advantages, the negatives, and put that into a game plan and work on that. 
I think that man's going to be Brandon Moreno. I think he's got a more analytical mind. Figueredo's incredible. I'm a huge fan. I love the violence that he brings, the knockout power, the jiu-jitsu threat, all the rest of it. But making weight has also been an issue for him. And from what I'm hearing, from what I'm hearing, MMA Junkie did an article on it. They said that, you know, this weight cut's not looking too good for him. So I've got Brandon Moreno. I've got Brandon Moreno in that one. Again, I could be wrong, but I feel the younger man will get it done here. However, it's in Brazil, you know, Figueiredo is going to bring everything he's got. So it's going to be a great fight, but I've got Moreno. Moving on, Gilbert Burns, Neil Magny. Right, Magny. Magny, what a guy this is. The, you know, Neil Magny will fight anybody. He will take on fights that other people will not. Fought Shavkat Rachmanov recently. That didn't go his way. Was willing to fight Hamzat Chimeyev. He'll fight anybody, right? And he's beaten some amazing people. Last time out, got a dos over Daniel Rodriguez, Jeff Neal, Max Griffin, Robbie Lawler, right? These are some of the people that he's beaten. And the only people to beat him recently is Shavkat Rachmanov and Michael Chiesa, right? Big guys that can wrestle, that can grapple, that take people down. Can Gilbert Burns do that? Does he have that type of style? Yes, he does. Look at what he did to Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Also, look at the power that Gilbert Burns possesses. The power that he has in his hands and his takedowns and his general athletic ability. Now, Neil Magnus, very experienced. He's very big, he's long, and he's a great athlete. If he has the right game plan, he could stifle Gilbert Burns, keep him on the edge of the jab, dance around, make it a very frustrating night. But Neil Magny likes to engage. He likes to have a fight. That's why we love to watch him fight. And I believe that's going to play into the hands of Gilbert Burns. He's got a power advantage on the feet. He's a better wrestler, I think. And when it comes to jiu-jitsu, come on, give me a break. Gilbert Burns is one of the best that ever did it. So I've got Gilbert Burns via submission in round three. But it's going to be a great fight. Now, moving on. Before that, we've got Jessica Andrade, the former champ, taking on Lauren Murphy. Now, Lauren Murphy, last time out against Misha Tate, looked sensational, right? She just had too much for Misha Tate. As the fight progressed, she found her timing and her rhythm. And it was a tough night at the office for Misha, but she showed a lot of heart. Before that, she lost to Shevchenko, but prior to that, it was a five-fight win streak over the likes of Joanne Calderwood, Andrea KGB Lee, Roxanne Modafferi. She's a tough lady, right? She's got great striking, good tie boxing, puts together nice combinations. But Jessica Andrade might just be the most violent female that we have on the roster. I love watching that lady fight, right? The way she picked up Rose Namajunas and slammed her on her head and put her to sleep, I will never forget. And then even in the rematch that she lost by a split decision, that was a very close fight. And George landed some amazing shots to the body, put on a great performance, lots of good pressure. And the only people to beat her recently, Valentina Shevchenko, right? No shame in that. Rose Namajunas, former champion. Zhang Weili is the champion. The other loss, Joanna Jacek when she was on top of the world. Now, granted, if you go back down the record, there's other losses, but in recent memory, she's only been, in recent times, she's only been beaten by champions. Now, this isn't a sign of disrespect towards Lauren Murphy, but I just think, I just think Jessica Andrade has got too much. So she's your winner for the B, for the Mikey B. Let's talk about this guy. Love Johnny Walker. Love what he brings to the octagon. He's unpredictable. He's unorthodox. He's got crazy power. He's ridiculously athletic and he shocked the world when he first burst on the scene and he burst his knee jumping off the top of the cage doing backflips and stuff like that but it's that kind of unpredictability and that athletic ability that he has that makes him so dangerous reality is though in his last two four six fights he's lost four Corey anderson knockout nikita krylov by decision santos he lost by decision jamal hill knocked him out in a spectacular knockout for jamal hill my god but he did beat iwan kutalaba in his last fight at ufc 279 how does this go down? Well, Paul Craig is known for the jiu-jitsu, as we know, right? That's his big thing, right? He's unbelievable at jiu-jitsu. If he can get Johnny Walker down, I can see a submission, right? But can he do that? I don't know if he can because Walker's ridiculously athletic, okay? Will he have the discipline, though, that let's say, for example, he knocks Paul down? Will he have the discipline not to follow him down? He's been working very hard on being more thoughtful, if you will, inside the octagon, being more strategic, okay? Slowing down his mind, throwing the right shots, being more orthodox. And these are all great things, but will that detract from what made Johnny Walker great in the first place? There is a potential for that. And of course, I love Paul Craig. Love Johnny Walker, love what he brings to the table. But Paul Craig, what a guy, what a legend. I got Paul Craig via submission. 
I think Paul Craig gets it done somewhere before the final bell gets a sub at Ged. Right, now, I've got to talk about this one. That's your main card there, my picks. In the uh, the featured prelim, we have Maurizio Shogun, who are going up against Ihor Potiria. Right, Shogun. We're going to talk about Shogun real quick. Love this guy. What a legend. One of the people that inspired me when I first started getting involved with mixed martial arts. I was trying to watch as much as I could. Watch all the UFCs, watching Prides, and I would watch Shogun. Some of the performances he had, the middleweight Grand Prix run that he had in Pride, some of the people that he beat, some of the legends. I mean, we're talking Alistair Overeem, Ricardo Arona, Nogueira, Quinton Rampage Jackson. Kevin Randleman came to the UFC, knocked out Chuck Liddell, beat Mark Coleman, won the belt against Leoto Machida, legendary fights against Dan Henderson. You know, but then he's starting to get on, you know, starting to lose some fights, a lot of wear and tear. You know, I had a draw against Paul Craig. Lost to Paul Craig. TKO due to punches. Unbelievable. Some misses to punches. Uh, so this is his last outing. It's his last fight. Ihor Pateria is the right kind of fight. Because he's had one fight in the UFC. He lost to Nikolai Negamariano. Prior to that, though, he had a very, very long streak. Seven wins by submission. Seven wins by knockout. He's a worthy fighter. He's UFC ready. Uh, and that's what Shogun wants. You know, we're not going to give him a condescending fight. We're not going to give him an easy matchup. We're not going to give him someone with one eye, no knees and half a brain cell. Remind you of anybody. Uh, no, he wants to have a relatively good fight. He wants to have a fight against someone that when he wins, he feels he deserved it. He doesn't want to give me. That would be insulting to the career that he had. And and that's what Eho Pateria is, right? He's a newcomer to the UFC, but he's got a record of 18 and three. It's a great record. And if he wins this fight, he gets to retire on a win in Brazil, put his gloves down in the octagon. What a farewell. That is the legendary fairy tale send off that all fighters dream of. And I, for the love of God, hope that Shogun gets it because he bloody well deserves it. And I'm picking him to win. I'm picking him to win purely because I'm trying to will it into existence. But there it is. There are my picks. What do you think? And uh, yeah, enjoy the fights. I'll be doing instant reaction videos. I'll be doing a video after the weigh-in. So come back to the channel. There's going to be lots of content regarding UFC 283. I've got interviews with Glover Teixeira, Gregory Rodriguez, Gilbert Burns. Who else? Who else? We've got some others as well, but I can't remember them right now. So keep an eye out on the channel. Subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't done so. And we'll see you soon.